Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, moving on to a different conversation now. And of course, one of the biggest uh, discussions in the world today is about the pandemic, COVID-19. How are countries faring and what uh, safety precautions are being put in place to ensure that citizens uh, stay safe? One aspect of this that is you know, bringing this conversation this morning is the notice by the Lagos State Government that there are fake COVID-19 certificates being given out at certain places in uh, Nigeria. So we're going to be having a discussion this morning with Dr. Olukemi Olubade. She is a public health uh, physician and an epidemiologist. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, I, I want to ask uh, what your reaction is. Were you surprised? Uh, did you expect this? So this um, situation is not unexpected because um, of the peculiarities of um, our country. For a lot of um, activities that require people process, you know, documents, usually you have racketeering of um, such situations, like, um, you know, you want to get your passport, you want to get your driver's license, you want to... Um, even apply for your transcripts, you know. There are different um, situations where you, you, you might have to, like, in quotes, settle or find a way around getting whatever you want to do at a higher cost. So I am not particularly surprised that this situation has um, happened, but it's something that could have been prevented with um, more strict measures. Yeah. You know, in making sure that um, Nigerians have access to the right information about the testing centers where they could get their COVID-19 um, tests done. However, this situation is not um, it, it's not something that can't be um, you know corrected because we have to look at the fact that most of these results really, where are they coming from? Are they from travelers into Nigeria? Are they for people that are in Nigeria already? Because uh, at the point where um, many Nigerians were being repatriated into the country, there were reports that many of them were coming in with fake results from countries they were being repatriated from. So this is not a typically Nigerian problem. It's a global problem. A lot of people where they find themselves in situations where they need to get home, they need to go home, and um, they're in you know, countries where there's no safety net for them for one reason or the other. They have to you know, get back into their home country, and they will do anything possible to make that happen. So All that right. is it's a global problem. It's not clear to Nigeria alone. However, right. Dr. Lukbadi, hold on. Um, kindly hold on. You know, I, I want us to take it step by step. Uh, so, so now you've, you've stated you know, that there should be standard operating procedures that sh you know, should limit the possibilities of these things. You know, I, I would, if, at some point, we would like to talk about um, why these things are happening, aside the corruption and the possibility of beating the system you know, aspect. Um, but let, let's talk first on um, what danger... Uh, this poses to Nigerians at large. If we have people coming into the country and we can't verify their COVID-19 status because you know they have fake certificates either from where, from where they're coming from or um, they get into the country and then they refuse to do the test, um, pay you know the amount of money that is charged for the test and then still refuse to do it, I have no idea. How much of a danger does this pose to the Nigerian society? Okay, so we're seeing the manifestations of that danger already because um, if, if for those that have been following the trend of the number of cases, we will see that, you know, from um, around October, the cases were seemingly decreasing, you know, we're having fewer cases detected, and then we now start seeing a surge by, like, middle of um, November up until first week of December when there was some, you know, like an explosion of numbers. And then from 50s to 100s to 300s, now states in cases in thousands. And that period coincided with the time where there was a large influx of people back into the country for the holidays, for the festivities. And now we have, you know, an ongoing, uh, you know, resurgence of, um, of 
COVID-19 cases. So this is the impact of, you know, um, this um, fake results coming in. But at the border and at immigration, it is important that um, these um, certificates are verified. And I think it's because there's also a system in place to track this, that it is being detected that there are fake results coming into the country. And the good thing is that even though this case might um, occur, these um, results are being verified. So even if someone is coming into the country with a result from whichever country, the test will be repeated in country. The impact of um, fake results coming in is that you know it could continue, it could um, continue the spread of the virus, and the more people get ill, and um, this virus we've seen to be a multi-systemic disorder that causes a lot of morbidity, mortality, and, and even disability, because for persons that have even survived COVID-19 infection. A lot of them still have some symptoms, and you know that situation has been referred to as long COVID, as an LONG COVID. So it's very important to prevent this situation because as long as people keep coming with fake results, they could be asymptomatic. They might even have the infection, and then if they don't self-isolate on return, they will continue to spread the virus. So that is the impact of fake results. However, I believe that there's a system in place to checkmate this, as results are being, as in tests are being conducted when people return into the country. All right, let me let me, let me quickly then, still staying with the fake results emergence. I, I want you to speak. It seems um, um, strange, but there are people who still do not believe we have a pandemic. Even some persons who are here in Nigeria insist that it's all a hoax, even today. So is it possible that it is this group of persons, their arguments that it is this group of persons that would, because people cannot understand the moral justification to get a fake COVID-19. Is this explanation, you know, something that is fair? And what would you say to those who continue to believe that the COVID-19 pandemic is a hoax. Okay, so there are two different populations of people. The people that are coming in with fake results are people that need these results to assess something. Probably they need it to come into the country or for people, persons that want to travel. And then in some settings now, you need a negative COVID-19 result to get um, certain things done, you know, especially if you're going to be um, exposed to people, all right? So it's important that those tests are done for um, certain categories. However, for those that don't even believe that COVID-19 exists, they will not even want to test in the first place. So I think that two different populations. And then for those that do not believe that um, COVID-19 exists, the treatment centers are everywhere in the country. In, in Lagos, you have at least one treatment center in every local government area. Those treatment centers have treated thousands of people who have recovered. There are still some people on admission. If they don't believe, they could get PPEs where and see for themselves that these cases really exist. Also, we've had a lot of survivors that have come out to tell their stories. And a lot of families are still grieving because they've lost a relative, a friend, a colleague to COVID-19. So COVID-19 is real. And it keeps spreading because of this ignorance, because people have refused to take up non-pharmacological interventions that prevent them from getting the virus. Okay. You've seen a lot of cases where you, um, you know, there's so many um, events going on without safety precautions and protocols being um, observed. And now the government has had to close down you know, um, some um, institutions because of those violations. So COVID-19 is real, and the earlier we protect ourselves and our loved ones from right. this virus, the better for the whole um, country. Dr. Lubade, I, I, I want to um, ask now about um, as insane as it is that a person would want to get a fake COVID-19 result, either be because they know that they are positive or because they maybe just don't have time to get tested. Um, it is also because we have a you know failure of certain systems and certain procedures here that should checkmate uh, things like that. So I, I want to ask about you know the process basically for inbound passengers 
and for persons in Nigeria. Uh, do we have a strenuous process that makes Nigerians feel they don't need to stress themselves so much? So they would rather just pay a little bit and get uh, um, uh, the test result, a negative result. Uh, is there ways that we can ease the process of getting tested and getting your results to help uh, reduce the eagerness, I, I believe. To, to, I think to just, to, just to add to what um, Osage, uh, Osage is saying is the fact that they've announced uh, new protocols for those uh, inbound uh, flight. Um, my question would be, shouldn't we be also considering a ban on flights at this time? Mm, okay. Okay, so um, your questions are multifaceted. Let me start from the, the reason why some people want to get a fake result, like you've already said, is because they'd rather not stress themselves. They feel, okay, I can pay my way through. I can, you know, not stress myself, not have this discomfort of having this, um, you know, test done, and then I can get the results. Because, you know, I know many people have seen the way the samples are taken, and some people are actually scared of that, and they would rather not go through the process. And I think that is the main issue. The test can be a bit discomforting, but it's just for a few seconds, and the sample is taken, and that's all. But, you know, that mentality of I can get my way through, I can circumvent the system, I can just pay and get the test done is the reason why some people would opt to get a fake result. But my problem is not even with people who want to get a fake result. It's the people who are giving the results. Because for you to have access to be able to do that, that means you're a professional. And so that means we are doing something unethical and unprofessional, you know, issuing fake results to persons who are probably positive or asymptomatic and will continue to spread the virus. So it is important that the regulatory authorities that, you know, supervise laboratories or wherever these persons are getting these results from, you know, um, sanction their members for or such um, unethical practices. Now, when it comes to the process, the process is actually seamless. You know, at the beginning of the outbreak, you know, there were so many cases and, um, you know, the authorities were a bit overwhelmed. But now, I think the, the process is very seamless. For those coming into the country, first of all, they have to register on a portal and print out um, a registration slip, and then they go have it test on and come in with the results, okay? And then the results are still verified when they come into the country. Within the country, there are designated laboratories, designated institutions where the samples can be taken. And all this information is on the website of the NCDC. And for each state, Lagos State has all the information about the authorized laboratories on their website. And then all this information is on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. All you just need to do is to do a Google search, accredited laboratories or testing centers in Nigeria, and you will see a, a whole list of these institutions. But I think, you know, there's this laziness and apathy that comes with, um, you know, getting this information, and people just claim that they don't know. They how, don't know how long does it take to get your results? So depending on what kind of, because there are different um, methods of sampling, you know, but the, what is um, the gold standard is the PCR. And usually in 72 hours, in some, in some places, even less than that, the results can be ready and, you know, you can collect. And right now, um, some of those results are either emailed to the um, client or you, you can even get a text, okay, depending on the particular um, mode of um, results transmission that the organization or the institution where, have, where you have done your test um, decides to transmit that information to you. In fact, at the point of collection, you can make a request on how you want your results sent to you, either a text or an email, or you can get printed out. So it's not difficult at all. It's a very seamless process. All right. Okay. And then there was one final question. Uh, the ban, uh, consideration of a ban um, yeah. Yeah. for flights. So if we look at the clusters where this um, now ongoing virulent strain is coming from, it's um, from certain cities in the United Kingdom, and then some um, from that variant to the very virulent strain has been found in some parts of um, South Africa. So I think in 
countries where they have, um, you know, a, a large cluster of resurgent COVID-19 infections, it's, it might be important to consider a, a travel ban from those countries, but that will be given. Before that is done, I, I believe the um, aviation authorities have to discuss with the NCDC and also inform um, Nigerians in those countries or whatever is coming into Nigeria that, you know, this ban is being considered so that when people, if people need to leave where they are to come into Nigeria, they can do that within a given period, maybe a week, they get their tests done and then they come into the country and then they are retested and they self-isolate on arrival. So that way, the, um, the entry into the country can be monitored and then we'll know if we now have um, a downward trend. Since we have you here, you're a doctor, you know what this is about. I want to ask you uh, your perception on the um, news, the very sad news that we've lost over 20 doctors uh, to COVID-19 related deaths in the uh, past weeks. Uh, what in your thinking would be the steps that must be seen to be taken um, to address safety of doctors? And of what impact is this uh, debt on uh, doctors? Do you see a situation where doctors will hesitate to put themselves out for fear that they might contract the virus? Yeah, so that situation has been very unfortunate and painful to the medical community because already there's a shortage of um, health workforce. A lot of people, you know, there's been the brain drain, a lot of people live in the country, and then for those that are here, you know, we have challenges with um, occupational hazards, not just doctors, nurses, you know, um, health assistants, everybody in the healthcare team, because um, responding to pandemic, you know, requires a team effort. But unfortunately, we have lost, you know, these heroes. And we pray that um, the Lord will continue to strengthen and comfort their families. But these numbers have left a huge gap in, in our already um, overburdened health sector, where the few persons available have um, volunteered to, to support the response. But unfortunately, you know, they got infected and some and some died. So this truly might um you know, make some persons hesitant to put themselves out there. But, you know, like we've been saying res recently in Nigeria, we move. We just have to keep on, you know, responding. We have to keep on supporting the system. But it's been important to put um, measures in place, you know, for infection prevention and control, um, improve um, occupational hazard allowance, uh, motivate health workers, and also, you know, factor in, um, you know, life insurance. Because if this persons had their lives insured, I'm sure by now, there'll be some relief that will come to their families from, you know, um, them having um, this insurance that would give the families some, something to fall back on. So it's important to motivate everybody in the health workforce, doctors, nurses, all healthcare workers, you know, because these are the things that allows them to know that, okay, they are cared for and, um, you know, their interests are protected. Okay, and a final question from me. I want to get your thoughts on what you think should be done uh, to the sellers of fake COVID-19 uh, results. Uh, I'm sure they're, of course, uh, healthcare professionals uh, like yourself, I believe, and uh, um, hospitals and laboratories that would be doing these things, you know, through the back door. So what do you suggest the government should do to, you know, uh, persons like that and institutions like that? Yeah, so I, I'd already, you know, like mentioned that that whichever rackets or institutions or persons are behind this, um, you know, um, situation, they, they, they need to be sanctioned. If they truly are health professionals, which I, I, I actually doubt, you know, if they're truly health professionals, then they should be sanctioned, whether they belong to the medical or laboratory or whatever kind of healthcare association, those associations should investigate and make sure that um, this person's face, you know, the appropriate um, sanctions and probably even the law, because okay. I'm sure there are fines and, um, you know, interventions that are given to such um, defaulting um, organizations. In fact, they should be shut down. All right, uh, quickly. Have contributed to the transmission of the infection. 
All right, uh, we have less than uh, two minutes, so I would like you to speak on this. Um, still from the NMA president, um, he talked about, uh, he, he says rather, that the social distancing has failed uh, in the country and is urging the presidential task force to develop new strategies to curb the spread of the virus. Uh, I, I was left wondering what new strategies um, could they explore to aside social distancing to help curb the spread of the virus. What's your thinking on this? So looking at our relationships, you know, as Nigerians, we're very communal. We were very celebratory, you know, a lot of people, even, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, found it difficult to um, social distance, so to speak. And then we now talk about physical distancing and um, trying to, you know, make sure that we limit large gatherings. And for now, I think that's what we'll still continue to do. Um, this um, suggestion by the NMA uh, person can, can be explored, you know, especially in um, maybe um, urban settings, still limiting large gatherings and... Um, you know, putting um, regulations in place to prevent, um, you know, um, a lot of people gathering at, at the same time. However, um, when it comes to, you know, rural areas, it, it some, sometimes enforcing these things can be very challenging and um, people will continue to gather, you know, but we just need to keep on, you know, educating people, you know, and letting them know that, you know, COVID-19 is real, and then there's an ongoing resurgence of cases, and people need to limit um, interaction for now up until we have a, a, a more stable flattening of this um, of, of All the right. curve. All right, Dr. Olukemi Olugade, public health physician, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, wisdom gleaned over the years, uh, you know, given a uh, quality um, um, advice that we can use. Um, I mean, it still remains that social distancing is something we must um, continue to make efforts to implement, even though it's tricky, it's difficult, like she hi rightly highlighted, uh, but we need to make at least an effort. An effort yes. And then in the absence of social distancing, it's not about wearing masks. Some people think it's just to wear the mask. You have to wear it properly cover your nose and your mouth. Some people will put it under their chin just to fulfill all righteousness. I was at the mall the other day and I was looking at people. Most of them, the mask was under them. I was like, what's the point? If you're not wearing the mask properly, yes. it defeats the entire purpose. So you need to make sure, even while you're talking sometimes, it slides down. So make an effort and where you put it up, the, the, the medical experts will advise, don't touch it directly. You can pull it from the sides and pull it up. Uh, you can find the specific directions on that online. Um, and of course, uh, we, we also need to do better with the Nigerian attitude of always trying to cut corners. Uh, that's the very um, major reason we're having the discussion I only today. Thought it, you know, just on a, on a side note. I thought it was only Abba made that is, you know, we can get everything done in Abba. No. Abba is not coming into the conversation right now. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just, just <laughs> trying to be funny. But it's, it's crazy, to be honest. Wait, we, we should do better. Um, you don't play with, you know, the health of millions of people simply because you're, not, you're, you're too lazy to do an actual test. You know, you, you, if you can afford to buy a fake result, it's, it's very unfair. Yeah, very, um, very, and, very criminal in my yes, thinking. It is. You because know, I, considering I think, that people are dying from the virus and you have the audacity, whether you believe or not that there is a pandemic, it is a rule and laws are meant to be followed to the later. Absolutely. So please follow the law. Do what you are supposed to do the right way. And if the if the sellers are healthcare professionals, it, it's enough, it you know, to have your license uh, revoked. It, it's I don't think there's I anything worse in this. I agree completely. I agree completely. We're going to break. When we come back. There is more to talk about here on the breakfast. Stay with us.